FDB Film Study is sponsored by Happy Valley United. To learn more about how you can support Penn State student athletes NIL opportunities, visit happyvalleyunited.com today. What's up, guys? Today we're talking about the UMass Minutemen. We're going to talk about the blowout. But we're going to talk about Manny Diaz and the ridiculous things that he does and the talent level that Penn State has on defense. We're going to talk about coverages. We're going to talk about how we make things look different, smoke and mirrors. The reality is Manny Diaz is painting a picture. It's just different strokes every week. Let's get at it. You know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe. Let's do this. I want to show you the first real third down package. Now, notice that we have what we call like the amoeba front where everybody's in a two-point stance. So if you look at it, he's got he's got five guys on the line of scrimmage. He's got one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so he's got a six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and he has a deep safety sitting over the middle. So, again, we're looking at a situation where Penn State has better athletes than UMass. And so what they're going to do is they're just going to lock them up. They're going to play inside leverage. They're going to lock them up man-to-man. -man. You're going to have a guy here who has the running back man-to-man -man when he comes out into space, and you have a free safety who's there to just make sure nothing happens. When you get a five-man rush like this and you get five-man protection, possibly a six-man, if you notice the running back tries to leak himself out late, watch what they do. Now, something I thought was really interesting in this situation was watch how the linebacker pulls himself out of this rush and grabs the running back to make sure there's no screen game and he takes that safety that he held underneath for any kind of shallow drag. Look how he's walling the inside off so that four has free reign here. And he knocks the living crap out of this kid. When a safety reroutes a slot receiver, I know you can't see this, but I want you to watch that crack. This guy has left his feet. And to be honest with you, I can tell, I think that's where the, that's where the quarterback wanted to go. And this just causes a complete turmoil, and you get the sack. Let's look at it from a different look here. So, again, third and long, we go back to the three defensive end package. This is a pure, unadulterated pass rush. And so watch. You get yourselves worked into a real nice stunt. This is what we call a long stick. We're going to work B gap. We're going to work A gap. The defensive end is going to pull himself back inside. All right, notice the linebackers watching him man to man. And I want you to watch this. Here it comes. Giggow! <laughs> As a coach, you love this. I'm sorry, but I can't do this. No, wait, wait, wait. Giggow! This is what dreams are made of as a defensive coordinator. That is beautiful. But aside from it, look at the pass rush. Look at this beautiful stunt they run, which allows 33 base could come untouched inside, and the quarterback has no chance whatsoever. This is beautiful. Beautiful piece of work. Okay. So here we go. We're going to go down to third down again. Okay, we're now another drive. It's still 0-0. Zero, zero. Okay, notice the difference in packages right here. Now, you again, you have a different package up front. All right, you have a, you basically have a corner playing on the line of scrimmage, but you're playing what they like to call an umbrella package. You're basically playing right on top of the sticks. So we get a motion into quads. All right, and so you're going to set yourself up for a real quick screen, and I want you to watch the trigger effect that happens. Okay, he does a great job. He triggers. He maintains leverage outside so that he can't get outside. And we rally everything back in. Watch what happens. He doesn't let anything outside. He comes back inside and they bring themselves into a good situation. Now, let's talk about how this fits. Watch the pass rush. Okay, take a look at the pass rush. And then you get a bailout. Boom. You get three guys bailing. You basically get a three-man rush. Okay, you've got guys over the top. And so let's come, let's kind of break this down for you. So you've got five guys over the top in an umbrella package, which means everything's going to be underneath. Well, when you get this look right here, you're thinking blitz package. And all of a sudden now you get five. So you got five over the top. You got three underneath and how they fit this. Watch how the safety brings himself. He maintains outside leverage so that we can rally ourselves back inside. Again, this doesn't seem like much, but this is just quality defense. Okay, now here we go again. This is another situation I want to talk about. It's first and 10. I want to talk about a couple things here. Number one, I want you to look at the play concepts above. We're running a zone exchange or a, they're called a gap exchange defense. We've talked about this on previous videos where the defensive end is going to squeeze if he has a running back to his side and the inside linebacker is going to go over the top for the quarterback pull game. But I want you to watch the defensive end squeeze himself so fast inside, inside that tight end. And there is zero chance that he can block this on this simple play action RPO. 
this is a play action is what it is to, to, to maybe look like an RPO because they're going to try to hit this guy in the window behind the outside backer. But he doesn't even have the chance to throw that ball because one, you get a pass rush outside who comes up and he gets in the face and you get an you get a guy playing the inside gap exchange, the linebacker who doesn't he doesn't allow him to step up. If this guy got blocked, we could step up. This would be no big deal. They could just drop this ball off either here or here. But the quarterback feels the pressure. He gets hit in the mouth, and boom, we're down. Again, we're doing this with a simple five man rush. Okay, and we're doing great coverage behind it. This is just stupid. All right, so now we're back to a first and 10 here. Okay, so now you have a tray look. We're going to send an in motion from the slot receiver. We're going to bring ourselves into a two wing look. You're down to the four three. Okay, we got a mic back or walk down. I want to show you some impressive things right here. Number one, look at the get off. This is about as close as it gets to being off sides, but I want you to look at what happens. This is a counter play. All right, so basically they're going to take this kid, they're going to kick the defensive end. This guy right here is going to bring himself and he's going to try to wheel inside and block the first guy in. This kid has zero chance because he times this so perfectly and he comes and he blows up. We call a mesh point blow up quarterback has to tuck the ball away and try to throw as hard as he can. This play was designed to be handed off. All right. This was an RPO, but it got blown up so fast. He had to pull the ball and had no choice but to throw what we call the RPO glance, and it's not there, and he has to throw the ball away. Why is that a big deal? Why does anybody care? Well, number one, this play should easily be nice and kicked because the way the blitz worked, if this if 11 could get to the defensive end, you have a play, you just hand the ball off, you got an opportunity to have some success here because, again, you've got the wing right here who's going to bring himself here. And then you have what we call the glance, and that glance is basically – He's going to glance himself right here. He's going to find the open alley and just find the window. Quarterback has no chance because it gets blown up so fast and so quickly that there's absolutely nothing that they can do in this situation. And I almost feel bad for him. And then I don't. Okay, so here we go. Now we're back in the second quarter. Penn State's at 14. We're in a tray look. We're going to bring the receiver back in. All right, you're in a simple four-man front. Okay, this is man. All right, this is the whole point of the motion. You've got your following man. We're going to get a nice little satellite motion where he comes back outside. Fancy, fancy. This was a design playoff of the screen. So they had run the screen previously earlier in the game, and they're going to they're going to bring themselves, and they're just going to try to run a vertical concept off of it. So they think they're going to get them to trigger, and they're going to run the wheel off of it and the post here, and this guy's going to hit the flat, and they're going to try to hit this guy right here. They see that it doesn't happen. So what the quarterback has to do is he has to tuck the ball and run, but he can't because the pass rush is just ridiculous. Watch the poor 72 get out of his stance. This is poor football, but second of all, watch the hands. Look at the hands. Look at the underneath rip. Look at this. As he comes underneath, look at the hands. Now look at the rip hand underneath. He gets his hips by. No chance whatsoever for that quarterback to have any success. So, again, now it's 21-0. We're in the second quarter. We're in a two-by-two. Two. It's first and 19. We had a penalty. Now, you're going to get that same four-man look, okay? Now we're going to get away from our man concepts. You can tell because of the way the corners butts are to the sidelines. You have a middle high safety, okay? No reason to run man on first and 19. But let's talk about this. We, we call this a fire zone. They're going to bring the blitz from the backer. They're going to take the defensive end. They're going to take him to the flat so that these guys can stay back and out. OK, and now we have another issue when they bring this on a three man pressure. Watch the defensive end up top. You get the same thing. You get a club down. You get right by on an RPO. There is absolutely no chance for this play to be successful. None, because the pass rush is just so dominant at the point of attack that I know poor number 72 right here is just going, oh, man, film is going to suck tomorrow. So here we go again. We're late in the second half. It's 28 nothing. You can tell what coverage we're in. We're in a one high look with a safety. We're manning this thing up. He's manning right here. Okay, You can tell who's got the man in the flat. We're going to run with the guy in the flat. This guy right here has got the running back. Okay, And so I want to show you how disgusting this is because they're handing the ball off in this situation, and they're trying to run buck sweep. We've talked about this before. Michigan ran this, so on and so forth, okay? They're just going to kick with the center. They're going to wrap around with the tackle. They're going to block everything down. 
All right. This thing gets blown up so bad by the nose guard that the guard can't even get there. He pushes himself through and makes a play in the backfield because he's caused so much commotion. They cannot run a simple play of football. They can't even run a simple play. All right, here we go. We are straight man, covers cover two man. All right, so these two guys are deep, and they're going to take anything over the top. We're pressing everything, and we're going to play what we call games up here. Look at the pressure. You got a three-man pressure, and they're basically just saying, okay, you guys are going to wall for any kind of hole that comes through. Now, 72 does a much better job of running him up the field. The only problem is the defensive end number 20 down here at the bottom gets a pressure. He rips and he pulls back inside. Notice the swim move right here. He gets over the top and quarterback has zero chance to be successful. Again, you're a man to man. Look, you're covered all the way down the field. I mean, we are white on rice right here. There is nothing open. They are just trying to throw a back shoulder at the stick so they can get a first down. You can't even get that ball off. All right, here we go again. We're going to talk about coverages. All right, we, most we talk about man. This isn't man, okay? And I think that they stopped disguising it as much in this game because of who they're playing. But this is just cover three zone. They're going to roll. He's going to go back. He's going to go back. And they're going to play a whole bunch of games. We're bringing a corner blitz off the boundary. Watch this. Corner blitz off the boundary, untouched. Give me some of that love right there. That is beautiful. Okay. But again, when you go to the boundary and you have two out here compressed up and watch while they play this. Okay. We get over the top. Okay. We get over the top. There's no man coverage or playing thing underneath. They're basically saying third and 10. We're just going to keep everything underneath us. We're going to take a shot here and we're just going to beat you to a pulp. And that is a hard blitz to cover. Now, if they're covering this like normal, if, if an offensive line sees this, he should see this happening. We They should be feathering out to this. This whole slide should be happening, and we should be manning us up right here. And I'll be honest with you, as an offensive lineman, guys, this is almost impossible to block. And so I, I'm blown away by the complexity of what he's doing on third downs. All right. If you remember before, play one, we're in man-to-man. -man. You've got a safety sitting over high, and then you've got the guy who literally in the same position decapitated this kid almost on the same exact play. Now, instead of decapitating him, he comes to rob it, and he comes and picks this thing off on a pick six, but comes back for an illegal block right here, okay, which, you know, Manny Diaz ripped into his butt later on. But again, simple thing. It's the same coverage. It's the same coverage with a different front look to it. And all of a sudden, instead of decapitating the kid, he just plays underneath and it's the easiest pick six of his life. But that's the beauty of Manny Diaz's defense. It's complex for opposing offenses, but simple for his guys to execute. Can I say that Penn State is on fire? Absolutely. And defensively, it is just nasty.